Hey guys, it's Anna from Bright Lane Gardens, and today we're going to do something kind of fun, and that is to create a whole succulent bowl out of only cuttings. It's currently mid-August. Our plant nursery is shut down for the season. Most of my yard planning is done already for the summer, so I'm looking for a little project that's going to carry me into fall. Planning right now with cuttings means that you're going to have to wait several weeks for the roots to take effect, which means that right when the weather starts to turn cold outside, my bowl should be in full bloom. A few things that I'm starting with here today, this is just a repurposed hanging flower basket pot. It's about 11 inches in diameter and has a really nice draining system down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter what you choose to use as long as you have a way for your succulents to be drained. It's a common misconception that succulents don't like to be watered that much. They can actually handle a large amount of watering. They just cannot handle wet roots or the ability to sit in that water for any amount of time. So the drainage of your pot is absolutely crucial. Another item that I love to add to the bottom of my pots anytime I'm working with succulents is just rocks. Any rocks will do, anything that you find out in your yard. I love to place these at the very bottom of the container like that to ensure that there's no standing water at the bottom of my container anytime I'm working with succulents. I've got a couple different plants here that I'm working with today. I likely won't use all of them, but I really wanted to have a variety to choose from. Most of these plants are in bad shape, to be perfectly honest, so there's only bits and pieces of each plant that I want to use, which is why they're so great for my cuttings bowl. I have a couple different varieties of Echeverias here up front. I like these because they stay at a medium height without spreading too much. I also have my classic hen and chicks. These are great for filling in other spaces. These will also likely be the first ones to root. I have a little bit of Crassula to add some additional texture to my pot here. For my height, I have a couple different varieties of Senecos along with my jade plants. Last but certainly not least, every succulent bowl needs a trailing plant. I have several here to choose from, a couple different varieties of sedums. As you can see, they are prolific spreaders, as well as my purslane, which is going to produce a lovely yellow flower when it's in full bloom. I'm going to go ahead and lower the camera here just because I think it's more important that you guys see what I'm doing with my bowl. So first things first, I have my bowl in place. I know that this guy already has holes in it and has a pretty good drainage system. I am going to still go ahead and add my rocks. These are just rocks that I literally found out in my yard. No big deal. You don't have to fill the entire bottom of the container. Just make sure that there's a handful of rocks in there. Not only do these assist with drainage, but they also help add some weight to the pot. So if this is something that you want to put out on your patio over the summer, it will have some protection from being tipped over by the wind. If you have a particularly beautiful rock that you really like the look of, go ahead and set that one aside for now. We can use it as decoration on top when we're done. Next, you're going to go ahead and add your soil mix into the bottom of your pot. For a soil mix, you don't have to get too fancy. They do make specific soil mixes for succulents. I personally think it's wildly overpriced. I always just buy a typical potting soil mix, or I use the blend that we use here at the plant nursery, and I just amend it with a little bit of additional coca coir and perlite. Again, the primary goal is a nutritious soil that is very, very well draining. Since we are working with cuttings today, you can go ahead and fill up your pot pretty much all the way. Make sure you break up any clumps in the soil so that your succulents can easily lay roots. Once you've leveled out the surface of your soil, it's time to go ahead and start designing your pot. Whenever I'm designing a round pot like this that's going to be viewed from a 360 degree angle, I usually like to put my tallest plants smack dab in the middle. I have a blue Seneca plant here. This is already a cutting, but I am going to go ahead and shorten him. These guys can get really tall, upwards of 12 inches tall, and they also produce a really pretty bloom right on the top when they are in season. So this is a really good central piece for my planter. 
I'm going to cut it so it's just about six inches tall like that and I'm gonna go ahead and snip off those bottom few branches just so I can sneak them into the soil. Once you have about a one inch stem available you can go ahead and stick that right where you want it. Firm up the soil a little bit around that guy just to keep him upright but there's no need to ever pack the soil. It will prevent your succulents from being able to successfully get roots through if the soil is packed too firmly. Next, I'm going to add one of my mid-tier height plants. This is one of my echeverias. This has the lettuce leaf. It's kind of like a curly edge to it. And as you can see, he is in rough shape. Instead of just taking a leaf cutting from this plant, though, I'm actually going to cut the stem really close to the top and use that as my new plant. So same thing as before, you just want to snip off those bottom few leaves to ensure that there is enough stem available to stick down into the dirt. Go ahead and place that guy exactly where you want him. The next plant that I want to use are hen and chicks. I absolutely love hen and chicks. I landscape with them all the time and I frequently use them in my succulent planters simply because they're so successful at propagating. One thing to note on the hen and chicks is they will spread, it, they don't spread super quickly, but they will spread over the years. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a location for them in your planter. I really want to have a variety of sizes moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a really teeny tiny one. This guy looks good here and you really just pull them right out of their pot. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a larger one here. And this guy already has some roots on them and a little baby on the bottom, what a deal. So I think I'm gonna put these opposite of my current Echeveria. So I'm gonna put them on the right hand side here. And I don't wanna plant the babies too close to the mama because this, this will spread and this will actually grow larger. So you don't want this to look like an overcrowded clump in just a couple months. And I think I want one more. If you've worked with hen and chicks before, then you'll know that they come in slightly different hues. This guy obviously has a little more of a purple tone to him, whereas this is like a bright green. Uh, because I already have so much purple, I'm gonna go for one of the bright green ones here. If they come off with a little stem like this, you can go ahead and leave that stem on as long as it looks like it's in good shape. Use your finger and just drill down a little hole in the soil so you can pop them right in there. All right, now that I have all of my Acavaria type plants inside my planter, I want to add something that's going to do a little bit of texture, and that is my Crassula, just like this guy here. As you can see, he's growing a little bit wonky. The pot itself was tipped over for a long time, so he started growing on his side. I'm going to just take cuttings from this guy so he can hopefully right himself in my new pot. Crassulas typically have branches that stem off from one primary stem, and I want to cut the entire stem in this case. You can propagate everything from branches to leaves on the crassulas, but I chose to do a main stem just so it can propagate a little bit more quickly. As I'm making this planter, I'm envisioning this part actually being the back side of my planter and this part being the front side of my planter. So I want my creeping plants over on this section and I'm going to put my crassula back here. Same thing as before, go ahead and snip off those bottom branches just enough to get about a half inch down into the soil. And I'll do a couple branches on him. Anytime you are working with succulent cuttings, you can usually expect a handful of them to fail. So if there is a plant that you really want to see in this planter, make sure you're doing two to three cuttings just to make sure you have at least one that takes. All right, so I have added my crassula in the back here. I have my hen and chicks on the left side, my echeveria on the right side, and my tall guy right here in the middle. As you can see, I do still have this open space here up front, so I'm going to add a couple of my draping plants. 
This is one variety of sedum, also known as the sea urchin sedum. I do like this plant. When it has fresh growth, it's bright green, and as it starts to die off, you can see it does turn a little bit yellow here. So this guy is towards the end of his life cycle, but the tendrils at the very end, this new growth, is really nice and vibrant green. Has a nice uh, It has a nice white outer edge to it, so it's got a variegated leaf. I think this is going to make a really nice addition to my succulent bowl. So instead of starting at the roots here at the base, I'm going to bypass those and just go ahead and trim off this end section here. And these are going to be the cuttings that I plant in my bowl. It's okay to have a couple different lengths on your cuttings, as long as you don't have one that's exceptionally longer than the others. So the same type of deal with this, you're going to want to go ahead and clear off the very end of this just so we can stick this part into the soil. And typically you don't even need to trim these guys, you can just use your fingers and run them along the edges. These you'll want to be a little more careful when placing. Because they don't really have much to hold them in the soil, you may have to coil these tendrils around and prevent them from hanging just for right now until those roots start to take place. Now I am actually going to do two different varieties of drooping plants here in the front. So I'm going to scooch these guys over a little bit just so I have room. I really want to add my purslane in there. I just love those blooms that they produce. Once you've got a couple of tendrils in there, that's usually enough to make sure that the plant will take. And after this plant starts to take root, you will notice it will spread prolifically. The very last item on my list is my purslane, but I have already changed my mind on the design of my planter. I actually want to move this echeveria over, which the great thing about cuttings is that it's very easy to do early on. And I want him to be centered between my two creeping plants on either side. This is a hanging purslane plant. This has been out in the sun for most of the summer, so it's got some nice ruby foliage on it. A couple blooms. It's a cloudy day today, so unfortunately they're not open, but they are very pretty when they're in bloom. And I'm going to take a couple key cuttings from this plant. So first things first, I still want to use this as a hanging planter, so I want to make sure that, the, uh, that I'm cutting sustainably. Um, this guy looks a little bit weak, so he's a great option. Again, cut those bottom ones off. And I want to get some of the new growth here in the middle. These short cuttings are still wonderful additions to your planter. Anything that looks like it's growing in really thick um, and could affect the overall health of the planter. This is another really good cutting here. So I'm really taking it from the thickest part right in the middle to the point where I'm probably not even going to notice it for the, from the overall health of the planter. And then I just want a couple of the longer ones just so I can start the trailing of my plant a little bit sooner. Okay, once you've selected enough cuttings, move that plant to the side. We're gonna bring our little bowl back here. And now I get to start designing. So there's these little nodules. I'll try to get a close up here. There's these little nodules like that one there that grow all along and they fall off really easily. If those fall off, hold on to them because they're actually going to make great additions to your bowl. It'll just take them a while to take root. The longer cuttings that I took are the ones that I do want to start drooping over the edge first. So I'm going to place those first. And then I can start to follow with some of my shorter ones. This guy here is really unique because I'm not even going to bury him. I'm actually going to lay him horizontally in the soil just like this. And little roots will start to shoot off from each of these little nodules here, which means I'm going to get a lot of branches from this individual branch. This one here is another unique one. I'm just going to stand him straight up in my pot and see which way the branches grow. All right, so all of the plants that I wanted in my little planter are officially inside of there. And it doesn't look like too much right now, but this will grow in to look really, really nice in just a couple months when these guys start to lay roots and grow.
There is one more step that I want to take before my bowl is complete, and that is to add a few rocks on the top of this just to add some decoration and also to help weigh down some of these freestanding branches so that they don't get accidentally knocked out of the pot. If you have any pretty rocks like this one, has a cool little fossil in it, or anything that's just a unique addition, those are really fun to add to your pot. This is the biggest rock, so I'm going to place him first, and I want a nice big opening to put him in. It's also nice if you can utilize some of your rocks to help prop up your taller plants as they will need support in the future. Now that the rocks are added, my succulent cuttings bowl is complete. It does not look like much right now, I'll admit, but over the next couple weeks and months, these will start to lay roots and you will slowly see these plants grow into their mature size, which will truly fill out the entirety of this bowl. Succulents don't need to be watered all that much. They can handle a couple waterings a week, but in all reality, they only need once every one or two weeks to survive and thrive. They do, however, really want that full sun, so I'm going to put this outside on my front deck until we start to see some of that chilly weather that we typically get in the fall, and after that, I'll go ahead and bring him back inside with me. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. I hope that you liked this tutorial on how to build a succulent bowl using only cuttings. This is a really fun way to reuse and recycle old plants that are looking a little bit shabbier than they should. You can still recreate them using leaves, cuttings, stems, whatever you have at your disposal. That's the magic of succulents. I'll post a couple updates on this guy coming up. And until then, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like watching content like this, please subscribe to our channel. That's the best way that you can see updates on bowls and projects like this as well. As always, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I hope to catch you next time. It is currently late October, and as you can see, my succulent bowl is doing really well, actually. I'm very excited to say that every single cutting that I placed in this bowl did successfully take root. Now in the back here, you might notice that my sedum looks a little bit scraggly and indeed it does seem to be struggling. Since it is the end of October and we're entering into the fall season, this is a perennial here in Michigan, so it is entering its dormant phase. But if you actually take a look down in there, you can see that there is a little bit of fresh growth that's trying to happen right there. So it does look like that's going to end up doing just fine. And I suspect now that I've brought this guy inside with a little bit of artificial light, that this sedum in the back here will really start to take off. My crassula in the front here has sent off new shoots in several different directions. This is doing really, really well. And over the course of the winter months here, since I am going to continue to water and fertilize this plant, I will notice a lot more shoots coming up to fill in this gap here. Off to the right side, the purslane is perhaps doing the very best out of any of these plants. Now I do have some outlier stems up here that I will go ahead and snip off. However, all of this down here is actually fresh new growth and I strongly suspect that in just a month or two, these will grow long enough to cascade over the edge of the container, really filling out this succulent bowl. These are my hen and chicks on the edge here. They have firmly taken root and they are doing very, very well. I suspect that these will end up doing so well that I'll likely have to thin them by next summer, which is of course a great issue to have because that means I just get more hen and chicks. In the back, I do have my Echeveria back here. This guy stayed nice and low to the ground. It'll take a little while before he can actually grow up and have any height to him. In the meantime, I do want to really make sure that this does not collect any excess water as that will cause the leaves to rot on the top. So when I water this plant, I'm going to always want to make sure that I water it from the front side of the bowl and I keep the water away from this Echeveria plant back here. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this succulent bowl turned out. This was created entirely out of cuttings, which means it's plants that normally would have just been thrown away. So to be able to create an entire arrangement out of just cuttings really, really is an exciting thing for me. And I'm very excited to see this grow in even more.
This succulent bulb will be kept in an indoor space that is both heated and has artificial lighting. I usually light about 14 to 16 hours a day, so I act as if it's midsummer. I'm really hoping this actually drives a few of my plants into bloom again because I just love having a little bit of color inside the house over the winter months. I'll post another update in a few weeks, but just wanted to show you in just eight weeks, this succulent bowl has really filled out nicely and is a beautiful gift to give to a loved one.